So what we have here is what we call the mature starter. We can see that the jar is filled up. So what we have here is a mature starter. So we can see that the starter inside the jar is full of bubbles. Those bubbles are carbon dioxide. Those have been produced by the yeast, eating the sugars inside the flour and producing carbon dioxide. So we're going to feed our starter. And to do that, we're gonna do equal parts of our starter, some flour and some water. I'll use another jar so we can see. I'm gonna start by adding some water. I'm gonna add 100 grams of water. So we have 100 grams of water. Add 100 grams of starter. Add 100 grams of flour. This all together, smash all. sure the ingredients are all mixed up very thoroughly. Now we can really see the difference between a starter that's just been fed and one that's had time to ferment and all the yeast activity inside. So if we look at the top, you can see that the starter that has had time to ferment is full of bubbles and fairly loose. And our starter that just got fed is rather thick. So when we mix flour and water together, we can trap natural yeast inside. The natural yeast will take a few days to start fermenting. And what it means by fermenting is that the natural yeast will eat the sugars that are inside the flour and convert those sugars into carbon dioxide gas. The carbon dioxide gas gets trapped inside and it will raise or rise, cause the starter to rise and that's what will raise our bread that we're going to mix today. Okay, let me know So what we have here is all of our ingredients weighed out. We have water bread flour, whole wheat flour, our natural yeast or starter, and our salt. So we will start by putting our flour, both types of flour,
and our natural yeast in our mixing bowl. We're going to hand mix this today. A mixer, an electric mixer could be used, but you can also do this by hand. So we're going to start by stirring the water around with the starter and the flowers. We're going to mix this until it starts to kind of come together in one big mass. You'll notice we did not add the salt. We're going to add the salt a little later because we're going to give our natural yeast a chance to start fermenting and eating the sugars that are in the flour. Salt will kill yeast. So because we are using a natural yeast that moves a little slower than store-bought yeast, we want to give it a chance to get going and do its thing. So I'm just going to keep kind of squeezing this in between my fingers, moving it around the bowl. Kind of use the dough to pick up little bits of the dough that are stuck to the bowl. Now we have the beginnings of our bread dough. So we've been letting our dough sit for about 20 minutes, and now we're going to add our salt. So we can just put our salt in. Use our hands again, mix it up really well. We want to make sure we're distributing our salt all around our dough. And you can see the dough is starting to really stick together. We're trying to create gluten. Gluten is a network of proteins that are inside wheat and rye. And there's two proteins. One is called glutenolin and the other is called gliadin. And when these proteins combine, they form gluten, which is a spider web like network that will help trap gases produced by the natural yeast in our dough inside our bread. So once we get all of our salt mixed in really well, we will again give our dough a 20 minute rest, 20 to 30 minute rest, and then come back and do our stretching and folding. All right, our dough has now been resting for about 20, 30 minutes. We're gonna flour our work surface. And since we are mixing by hand, we're gonna give our dough some stretches and folds to build up the gluten network. So we can see our dough isn't quite smooth. And if I try to pull it, it sticks together pretty well, but then it'll kind of tear apart. So by doing our stretching and folding, we're going to really strengthen our gluten network. So I'm going to stretch, fold the dough over, dough over onto itself. And I'm going to kind of do that from each side of the dough. Final one here. Our dough over. And we can see this has gotten a little smoother, so we're going to give it another fold in about another 20 to 30 minutes.
So we're going to weigh out our doughs. We're going to weigh each one at 750 grams. What we're going to do now is shape our bread. So to shape, we're going to do the same actions that we were doing when we were folding our dough, stretching and folding, to build up our gluten. So I'm just going to take the dough, fold, stretch and fold it over onto itself. Get a little flour on my hands, and give it final shape. I'll take it, pulling it against the table with my hands, I can go on a circular motion. I can just pull towards myself, rotate the bread, use the table to push the bread against. We can see we have a nice firm, we can see we have a nice firm shaped piece of bread. I'll do our other loaf, our other round, stretch and fold. I'm going to pull the bread against the table using my hands. So if we take a piece of our dough that has been allowed to sit overnight in the cooler, you can see that the gluten is quite strong. We can take this piece of dough, stretch it quite far. You can see our gluten inside. So our doughs have been sitting overnight and they are about ready to go into the oven. You can see if we give the bread a little poke. Oh, that's not quite ready. So our breads have been sitting overnight. They're about ready to go into the oven. Give the bread a little poke. You can see it fills back out with the gas that has been produced inside the dough by our natural yeast. And now we will bake our bread. Scoring the bread. By cutting the bread with a blade, that allows for our moisture that's built up inside the bread to go out in one certain spot, and it'll make cool designs on the bread also. Use a razor blade, very sharp razor blade. Our oven is set to 480 degrees. We're going to add some steam to keep our crust from forming right away.